is up everybody my name is sam and today we will be talking about the second round of the playoffs and it's finally fully here the warriors versus the kings game seven an amazing amazing game an amazing performance by stephen curry making himself to me the best point guard ever the best point guard ever passing magic johnson i mean he had i think the most points scored in a fit in a seven game seven um passing kevin durant's record scoring 50 points Eight rebounds, six assists, and they needed every single one of it. And he just balled out. Kevon Looney, the second coming of Hakeem Olajuwon with 11 points and 21 rebounds. And I believe 10 of those were offensive rebounds. Amazing. Dominated the paint. That's what they need. They need big performances from, um, I almost said Hakeem Olajuwon, from Kevon Looney and Stephen Curry. Of course, the rest will step up and we'll talk about that right now. And now... It is the Warriors versus the Lakers in round two. Curry versus LeBron. We've seen it many times in the finals, but we have it here to go to the WCF. And I think this is probably the, mm, I mean, I'd say the more important one, but I'd say this one is very, very anticipated. You get seven series to go, a game seven series to go to the WCF. And here, I think I'm going to take the defending champs in six because, I mean, the Lakers don't have anyone. They're a good defensive team, but they don't have anyone that can stop Steph Curry. I mean, nobody really has anyone that can stop Steph Curry. Um, Clay Thompson, they don't really have an answer for that. Um, Draymond Green, oh yes, I mean, someone could, they can stop him offensively, but defensively, he can have the Anthony Davis assignment, just be physical with him, or they can have him on LeBron. And I hopefully, hopefully Draymond's opinions and about LeBron don't ruin the Lakers, but I don't think they will. But Anthony Davis needs to be the best player in the series by far. He, he's he been playing amazing with the Grizzlies. You know, he had a one game that he didn't do so well. But still, defensively, he's been amazing. And that's what they need. They need him to dominate on the boards. And that's going to be a little tough, especially with Draymond grabbing some boards. Steph Curry with eight rebounds. And then with Hakeem Olajuwon, Kevon, Kevon Looney grabbing 21 of those boards. I mean, they're going to need him to step up big. And they're going to need him to be available because if he's not, LeBron by himself is not going to be able to beat these Warriors teams because they are looking like the last year's team who won the championship. But also, I mean, this Lakers team's looking like that that bubble team that won the championship. I mean, I've been I've been kind of disrespecting them all season because they I mean they haven't looked good, but now they're putting it together, and that's why I have a game going to six. I hope it goes to seven just for, for it to be, you know, just for it to be a series, but. I just don't think they have enough to stop the Warriors. I mean, I'm giving the defend, defending champs some their respect. And I think it comes down to Jordan Poole playing well. And that's going to be the next factor off the bench because you're going to have a Rui Hachimura that's going to have a decent game. You're going to have an Austin Reeves who's going to have a game. But then also on the Warriors side, you're going to have um, Andrew Wiggins who's finally getting his legs back, getting conditioning back after missing a while. And I don't really think that the the Lakers have anyone that can stop Andrew Wiggins and – Man, they're going to need to stop Wiggins, Clay, and Andrew Wiggins. And then you're going to add uh, Jordan Poole on the bench and then Dante DiVincenzo, who's been playing solid minutes for them. Man, they're going to have their hands full. But here, the defending champs go to the, DC, the WCF in six. And also game one of yesterday's games was the Knicks versus the Heat, and this was a battle. I mean, back and forth, back and forth. The Knicks fought, the Heat fought, but... but um. Jimmy Butler showed out, of course, his ankle injury towards the end of the game. I hope he's healthy, and that's going to be a huge factor for this. Julie Rand- Julius Randle missed, and they needed him a lot. Um, Mitchell Robinson dominated on the boards, but, man, they really needed him. R.J. Barrett stepped up, and then Jalen Brunson was Jalen Brunson. But, man, Gabe Vincent had the game of his life, and that's what the Miami Heat needed. I think Kyle Lowry even had four blocks, which is a ridiculous, and... I mean, I still got the Knicks winning this series, I think, in um, six or five. But I think that Jimmy Butler um, injury is going to be a big factor to them because he has been their whole entire offense because Bam Adebayo had a decent game, but he hasn't been the Bam Adebayo we all know and love. But, man, with that Jimmy Butler injury, the the New York Knicks just need to be like, we smell blood in the water and take advantage of this. And R.J. Barrett, shout out to him. He had a big game, and I think – with Julius Randle impact, because, I mean, for him to dominate the boards and for him just to be solid enough, I think the the Knicks would have took this one. But I know the history. I think it's like 
the past seven series, every time the Knicks lost at home, um, they're 0-7 or something like that. But I think I think the Knicks take it. This Knicks team is different. And, I mean, <laughs> I could have the Knicks going to the ECF right here. And I got Knicks and six. Knicks and six or five. I wouldn't be surprised about that. And then today's games, we have the 76ers versus the Boston Celtics. The No Joel Embiid. And that's going to be a huge factor because I think if there's no Joel Embiid, the 76ers have no chance at all, especially with James Harden being on and off, on and off, and then Tyrese Maxey kind of having to take the load, and you can just double him, and that's it. And that's relying on Tobias Harris to be the to be the big guy. But I don't know how much you can really rely on that. And then the Boston Celtics, yes, Jason Tatum has not been playing well, but historically he's played pretty well against the 76ers. I mean, and you don't really need him to play that well. For him just to play decent, you know, 20 and then some boards and reap and assists. And you have, because you have Jalen Brown, you have Marcus Smart, you have the big factor that I've been saying this whole entire playoffs, Derek White. And then you also have Malcolm Brogdon and then Robert Williams, of course. But here, man, I would, I would, I don't want to say they sweep, but I think 76ers and, or no, um, Boston Celtics in five. Because, I mean, I don't know how long is um, Joel Embiid going to be out because it is, a, I think, a partial. I don't know if it's a full ligament tear. But I believe that's um, from a Shams report. That's like about four weeks, four to eight weeks that he could. And that's a, usually four to eight weeks that they miss on that injury. And him and them missing him early is going to be huge. And I have the Boston Celtics here taking it in five. And, man, if they get swept, that's going to be a whole different thing. That's going to be a whole with the whole James, Rock, uh, James Harden and the Rockets situation. Joel Embiid, what's next for him? Is he tired of it? Or is it just because of him? But... Man, I'm hoping Joel is healthy so it could be a series, but it looks like it looks like he's not because he's not really practicing or anything like that. But the last series, Suns versus Nuggets, today is Game Two, and Game One, man, oh man, the Nuggets just dominated. And the Suns fought back here and there. Kevin Durant did everything that he could, but man, when you have Nikola Jokic have the game he had, Jamal Murray, of course, showing out like he usually does in the playoffs, Aaron Gordon. Almost being perfect from the field. Michael Porter Jr. I mean, it's just this team is so deep. I think it's just too much for the Suns to handle because you're going to have Jamal, uh, not Jamal, um, um, Kevin Durant playing 40 minutes. Devin Booker playing 40 minutes. DeAndre Aiden being somewhat effective because of Nikola Jokic's, um, his def- defense isn't really there. But it's like, man, he's giving, you, he's giving you 12, but then Jokic is just giving you 20 and then all these assists and he's just working Aiden and, and that's why you have Bismack Biyombo in there, Jock Landale in there, but I think it's just I think it's Jokic is just too good for the Suns, and the Sun and the Nuggets are just too deep. I think that's what it is. And here I just I hope I hope it goes to five, five or six, because I think honestly the Nuggets need to get their they've been lucky with staying healthy so far, and that's what they need. They need to get these series done because the Warriors or the Lakers are gonna give them. A run for their money. They're gonna make it a series. They're gonna. I think those teams will be most likely to push the Nuggets to a seven-game series, than the Suns, than the Timberwolves did. And here, I'm hoping the Nuggets get it done in five. But I can see it in six. You know, the Phoenix Arena goes crazy whenever the Suns play there. But hopefully, Nuggets get it done in five. I want you to comment down below. What do you think of the second-round predictions? And who do you have going to the WCF or the ECF? And we'll see you next time with more content. Peace.